We talk a lot on this program about having a relationship with God. And sometimes those words can become just buzzwords. They lose their meaning in a culture that's too familiar with the phrase. That can be especially true if you're raised in the faith and sometimes we never really take that step to choose Jesus for ourselves. Somehow thinking we've inherited salvation by growing up in a Christian family or growing up in Christian culture. It's just all too common. Well, my guest today shares that story and her journey to find Jesus for real will both challenge and inspire you. Mo Isom, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, I mean, you grew up in that perfect Christian family, in a sense, going to church, hearing about Jesus, you know, true followers of God. But right. for you, you went and you said all the right things, but it, tell me how it doesn't get in there. Yeah, so I grew up with, like you said, incredible um, Christian parents who worked really hard to instill in me what it meant to be a godly woman. But uh, like you alluded to, it was kind of this faith by inheritance. I kind of assumed um, I had, you know, a church in a box here and a cross on my necklace and I was a good person. And so maybe my seat in a church pew could earn me a seat in heaven. But um, knowing a lot about God is very different than knowing God. Um, and I knew a lot about God, but I didn't see how or why he was supposed to be applicable to the other six days of my week. It mm. was kind of, you know, he was relevant there at church and then watch me work, watch me build the rest of my life moving forward. Um, and that's a dangerous place to be because we begin to carry the weight of life on our own shoulders. And um, I certainly struggled and, and began to really stumble with that and, and fall short in a lot of ways. I think that happens. I think a lot of people watching can actually uh, identify with that because sometimes it's, we don't actually realize we haven't even done it until right. we hear someone like you talk or something happens in our life where we realize we're falling short of being able to grasp that comfort or what we need to move forward with God. Right. And we go, oh, you know, actually we're a lot farther away than I thought I was. Yeah, it's such, to me it was marked by such a lack of peace, this constant striving, um, you know, having the title of Christian, but just so um, overwhelmed in all other aspects of my life of it being about my works and my strength and my abilities and my failures and you know how good I could be and it was no peace striving um, constant needs for control that really led me down a vicious path that um, turned itself into an eating disorder um, that wasn't so much an image issue it was a complete control issue because mm -hmm. I could have control over that one thing when everything else felt like it was spiraling Things um, at home were getting worse. Like your dad, you know, he was he was getting moody, and you never knew if he was going to be kind or unkind. And he was driving you, like right. coming home with your grades, you got a B, which is great. What, what would he say? Reprimanded. Oh. <laughs> it was um, it was tough because I love my dad so fiercely, and all I wanted to do was make my dad proud. And I feel like that's oftentimes our hearts. You know, we we long to make our parents proud. Um, but our parents are human too. And, and my dad was dealing with sin struggles as well. And that was affecting um, his temperament and his moodiness. And it kind of became the rhythm of our days that when I did things well and achieved things, my dad was in a great mood and proud of me and um, everything was wonderful. But if I fell short or failed or you know had a bad soccer game or whatever it may be, um, it was the silent treatment and it was anger and uh, moodiness from him. And that picture of my earthly father began to paint a similar picture of my heavenly father that that must be what it's like with God. I do good things, I get blessings. I do bad things, then you know God turns his back to me. Exactly, and that's so confusing. So here you are spiraling downward in an eating disorder. Well, you are a soccer star and you're having all this success through your type A personality and your discipline. Right. You know, you're you're becoming a force to be reckoned with in this in the soccer world. Right. And yet you're you're you know you can't live very long with an eating disorder without your life becoming disordered, I guess, in a sense. What, what stopped that? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I saw this opportunity of transition again, um, headed off to college, and I was so tired and weary struggling with this eating disorder. It had been four years. It had been my entire high school career that I'd been struggling in the darkness with these image and control issues, excelling on the surface and trying to blend those two you know, lives. And um, I was just exhausted. And I saw this opportunity for transition into college and I came across a piece of scripture. I don't know how, where, I love how the Holy Spirit kind of <laughs> meets us that way. I couldn't have told you anything about the book it was in at all, but it said, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It didn't say come to me with your perfect you know, presentation. It didn't say come to me with everything figured out. It said come to me if you're weary and burdened and I will give you rest. 
and I just needed rest. And so I kind of crawled back towards the faith and my parents really instilled that this now had to become my own faith. I was headed off to college and if I desired healing, I needed to set my sights on the healer and find a relationship there um, that could break a lot of those chains in my life. So at this point, you really started a genuine relationship with God now. This isn't cultural Christianity. This is something different. And what changed then from that no peace, anxious life that you led before? Right, well, I, I was a step closer, but still kind of with this skewed perspective of God. So I began to just give him the glory in all things. And it was amazing, the incredible blessings that rained down athletically, I mean, scored a 90 yard goal as a freshman. I, Let's not go we, right over that. First of all, a 90 yard <laughs> goal as a freshman at university, that's never been done in the sport. It had never happened, yeah. Like in any of, like the most professional soccer stars in the world had never accomplished from not moving, like. Right, a standstill ball, a free kick, and scored a 90 yard goal. That's unbelievable. Girl, the thunder thighs, they came, uh, they had purpose <laughs> in that moment, and I felt <laughs> fulfilled. That's amazing. It was amazing, it was amazing. God began to build this incredible platform off of the things that I loved, my sport that I was successful at. I was moving through this eating disorder and just giving him the glory and the blessings rained down. And I thought, this must be what it means to be a Christian. I give God the glory and the blessings come. What have I been missing? You know, how could I have, missed this for so long. And so I kind of moved from this warped perspective of God in a box, you know, on Sunday and that was it, uh, to kind of still this incomplete perspective of, oh, I give God the glory and he gives me the blessings. And um, so I was learning, I was growing, but I still didn't really have a totally full picture of God. Um, and and really the, the next chapter of adversity came, put that to the test in, in a big way. Yeah, so I mean, during this time as you, you know, you were giving God the glory and, and coming closer to him, he was healing your relationship with your dad, good things were happening there, but you didn't know behind the scenes that your dad had been, um, there'd been some financial situations there that he hadn't told your, your family about, your mom about. Right. And as that came to light, you came home uh, around the holiday season, Christmas. Mm -hmm. What happened with your dad? Yeah, came home for, for winter break after my freshman year of soccer. and. Um, like you said, didn't know a lot of things that had been going on underneath the surface. And um, one night my dad didn't come home from work. And um, to make a very long portion of the story short, we, we ended up uh, finding out that he put a gun to his heart and pulled the trigger and um, just essentially gave up. He committed suicide um, in January of 2009. And that sent me running from God. So I'd been on this roller coaster ride of faith of the good things bring praise, the bad things, God, you turn your back, you know, what does this faith look like? And all of a sudden, I was just punctured as deep as you could imagine, a gaping hole in my heart. And I said, God, I don't believe that you're good, holy. I don't even know if you're real. I took off running into depression, anxiety, promiscuity. I mean, any sin-sized piece I could find to fill this God-sized hole in my heart, I just indulged in and was still competing athletically. We should win Academy Awards for what great actors and actresses we are, because acted like everything was fine on the surface and you know, in the darkness and not the person I was ever created to be, just running and in a lot of pain. We have no idea what's happening uh, behind people's facades and what's really going on in their lives. It's something I try to remember when people are mean to me or annoy me or, you know, all of that. Yeah. But I, you know, I went through a season very similar to that in the sense that I grew up with that idea. Same thing, like if you're good, God will bless you. You know, um, everything good will come your way if you follow him. Right. And, you know, when life doesn't go that way, it's very hard to understand how a loving God right. would let your dad commit suicide. Why didn't God stop it? He's sovereign, like he could have done it. Yeah. How did you ever come to peace with that or have you? I have, I have, um, because God wrecked my life. Um, I, I spent a year really wandering, struggling, hurting. Um, and the cry of my heart really in that year became, God, if you're so real, do something, do something, reveal yourself to me. You know what, God, if you're so real, just wreck my life, just end it. Because I understand why my dad did what he did and I see it as a viable option. And um, I was headed home for Thanksgiving break almost one year after my dad had passed and didn't realize God would answer my prayer quite literally. Um, my vehicle lost control, flipped my Jeep three times, landed upside down in a ravine at 1.30 in the morning on the interstate, completely physically broken. He wrecked my life, but he revealed himself to me in that wreckage. It was hanging upside down in that car that the Holy Spirit just entered mightily, 
transformed my heart, revealed, downloaded the depths of the gospel into me. Chapter seven in the book, it's my favorite chapter and it's where they can read all about what God did in an instant in my heart and wrecked my perspective on everything, on the adversity, on the pain, on the hardship, on the past, and began to build a life moving forward um, that was just indescribable. I think the one thing to sum up that experience it seems reading that book is um, love. Yeah. You all of a sudden realize that the love that you understood, like I have to perform to be loved, I have to be perfect to be loved. Right. You understood that in all the ways you'd run from him, in all the ways you'd been distant, all the ways you'd sinned, yeah. that he loved you then, that he loved you now. Yeah. How does that change now what, what you do today? How do you communicate that to people? Because it's such an internal thing. It's like, how do I get that out to people who are with that same worldview? Yeah. God can't love me if I don't do everything right. Right. It's almost like, how do I find the words? Um, because that love is so indescribable, but it is so available for every single person. It's the grace. It's the grace of Jesus on the cross that says you are not defined by your past or your plans. You are only defined by the scars on Christ's hands. And, and that just shifted um, my reality, it, it changed everything. And, um, you know, there was one man on the road that night that found me in the wreckage and, um, he said he shined the flashlight into the car and it caught my face and I was just smiling, bloodied, messy, <laughs> broken, but <laughs> I was just blood. repeating, yeah. exactly, repeating three words and it was, God is beautiful. God is beautiful. And he told my mom that it, it, it was like I had the look on my face of if I had just seen the most incredible sight and all I cared to do was tell anyone who would listen about it. And I crawled out of that car and recovered and all I've cared to do from that day forward was tell anyone who would listen about this king who meets us in our mess, who doesn't say, come to me together and figure it out. He says, come to me weary and burdened and I will give you rest. He says that you're seen and you're known and you're loved and you're cherished and that he uses all for his glory. That Satan will wage battle after battle after battle in our life, but he's a king who's won the war. And we can place our faith in that and move forward. Whether our life looks amazing, whether there's continued adversity, whatever it may look like. We have a divine hope in the depth of defeat in the valleys that there's someone greater who sees us, knows us, loves us, um, and that this earth is our temporary home. We have a heavenly home that we'll head to and I look forward to that day where all the pain and the suffering fades away and, and we're in the presence of God. We could talk if we're here for hours. You got me There's, preaching now. I, know, I'm I love sweating. it. I've, I've got goosebumps. <laughs> it's so true. And, you know, thanks for being so authentic about your journey and, you know, giving hope, I think, to people in, the, in these various stages, feeling distant from God, not understanding what's happening, eating disorders, the death of a loved one, you know, by suicide. There's so many things in your life that God has redeemed. And, and you stand here full of joy, full of peace, mm -hmm. full of hope. Right. Thanks for coming and giving hope to others. Thank you. It's a pleasure to share it. And I think there's power in our testimonies. So I would encourage anybody watching, um, if you have a story of grace, you have a story of grace to be shared. And this world needs to hear more of that grace. That's right. Thanks. Thank you. Well, if you're watching this interview, and I know for so many of you it's hitting home, and maybe God's felt distant, maybe you felt distant from God, haven't been able to understand why your life has gone the way it has or what's happened to you. Once you know there's a resource available to you that you can give us a call, we have these wonderful prayer partners who just love to listen to your story, to pray with you, to help you find that hope, to help you sort through sometimes the broken pieces of your life. There's a number on your screen, 1-866-273-4444. Give us a call. We'd love to pray for you and help you move on to the next step of your journey.